Microsoft Windows. Most of you are probably using it right now or at least are familiar with it, but as you might expect, there are tons of settings you probably don't know about, but at the same time probably should change, whether it's turning off settings that are on by default or the other way around. Now you may have seen my other video talking about 15 Windows settings to change, but this is kind of like a part two to that with 13 more completely different settings than that. So if you haven't already seen that video, I highly recommend watching that afterwards. So I'll put a link to that in the description and I'll have the little pop-up icon that you can click on and all that. Anyway, for this video, I'm gonna point out that I will be using Windows 10 and build 1909. So things might look slightly different depending on your version, but mostly should look the same. Before we jump in though, be sure to check out my Instagram account where I post cool tech stuff and the most hilarious tech memes in existence. Please don't blame me if you die of a heart attack from laughing too hard. So my username is just at Theo Joe, so be sure to check that out over on Instagram. So let's get started with number one, and it's a feature called Clipboard History, which can be found in Settings, System, Clipboard, and then just toggle it on. You can then use it by, instead of pressing Control V to paste, you press the Windows key plus V. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I personally think this feature is really useful because there are plenty of times when I wanna access text that I had copied before, but it's gone because I copied something else and forgot. Now, you do have the option to also sync the clipboard history across devices, but I personally don't use that. If you do though, you can actually choose whether to automatically sync everything or just certain things manually, so you have quite a bit of control. And of course, you can clear the clipboard history at any time. Definitely a feature worth trying. All right, up next, we have a quick one which can be found in settings, personalization, start, and then look for where you can choose which folders appear on start. These selections change which folders show up on the left side of the start menu when you open it. Things like documents, pictures, videos, but also network, settings, and a couple others. So you can actually decide on what you want to show up here, or maybe just you want it all to show up, it's up to you. Okay, up next we have another setting that some of you power users will probably like, but don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about with this one. It's also under settings personalization, but this time in taskbar, and it's called replace command prompt with Windows PowerShell, blah, blah, blah. This is actually on by default ever since Windows 10 has been pushing people to use PowerShell instead of the old command prompt. Now, PowerShell is very powerful, but I think even mostly power users and myself are much more familiar with the old command prompt and would rather keep using that in most cases. So disabling this won't disable PowerShell or anything, it just makes it so the command prompt is the default option in most cases. However, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, you can just keep this setting the same. It literally won't make a difference to you. All right, now number four is so simple, but so essential in my opinion, and it has to do with the task manager. So you can bring this up just by pressing Control plus Shift plus Escape, if you didn't know that shortcut already. Now at the top, you wanna to go to Options and then click Always on Top so it's selected. This deceptively simple setting is actually a lifesaver. It makes it so whenever the Task Manager is open, it always comes in front of all other windows, even full screen windows, and won't be blocked. Obviously, one of those common reasons to use the task manager is when a program is freezing and won't respond and only the task manager can kill the process. But sometimes, especially with full screen windows like games, it'll push the task manager behind it right after it opens so you can't even use it to close the program. And then you just have to force power off the computer and then it's a pain. This way, that should never happen, or at least not unless the frozen program is really broken and could save you a ton of headache. It'll always be on the top so you can always access it. Okay, moving on, we wanna to go to settings, search, searching windows, and then look for the setting under find my files and change it to enhanced. If it's set to classic, when you do a search on your computer, it won't actually search your whole computer, only different libraries like documents, pictures, videos, and desktop, but nothing else, which completely defeats the purpose of doing a search. Now, we're not done because if you're a more advanced user and sometimes need to find files and folders in weird locations, note that even with enhanced mode, Windows will still exclude many folders from search listed below in the menu. By default, this even excludes the program files folders and app data folders where most configuration files are stored, which you might want to still be able to search. So I personally removed the program files and app data folders from the exclusion list, so they will be searched. And keep in mind, there might be multiple of each if you install programs on multiple drives. All that being said though, if you are just a typical user, you probably don't have to worry about all that. Just changing the setting to enhanced is fine. And if you don't know what those excluded folders even do, then you don't need to change that. All right, number six. This is a basic privacy setting you definitely wanna change. It can be found in settings, privacy, 
activity history, and then disable the setting called send my activity history to Microsoft. This has to do with the activity timeline feature that was added in an update. So this setting didn't exist in my last video about Windows settings to change. And as a reminder, there are a lot of other privacy settings in that other video that you should definitely still change. So again, be sure to watch that video after this one. The link again will be in the description and also at the end. Speaking of Windows updates, number seven has to do with just that. The setting can be found in update and security, Windows update, and then look for change active hours. And here you can set up to an 18 hour time window every day during which Windows will not automatically restart to install updates. I doubt I have to tell you why this is useful. The whole thing about the Windows update restarts has been a meme since the beginning of time. And of course, you can always manually restart if you need to install updates if you want during this window. All right, for the next few, we're going to actually be changing settings in the file explorer. So for these, you can open up any file explorer window and then go to view, options, and then change folder and search options, and then the view tab. So next up is a setting to enable in here called display the full path in the title bar, which like the name suggests, just makes it so Explorer Windows will now show you the entire full directory path instead of just showing the current name of the current folder, which I think makes a ton more sense so you can always know where you're at. Next, number nine in here is called launch folder windows in a separate process, and you'll probably want to enable that. This makes it so every time you launch Explorer and open a new separate folder window, that window will get its own process. This way, if you have a bunch of different Explorer windows open and one of them freezes, theoretically, only that one will freeze instead of taking all the other ones down with it. So if it outright crashes or you have to kill the process with the task manager, the other ones will be more likely to be unaffected, which can save you a ton of annoyance. All right, this next setting is actually over in the general tab and it's called Open File Explorer 2 with a dropdown. And by default, this is set to quick access, but I think it makes much more sense to set it to this PC, which used to be called My Computer in older versions of Windows. So now when you open a new File Explorer window, like from the taskbar, you'll see all the drives and network locations instead of just showing the quick access items, which are still on the left-hand side anyway, so it was completely redundant. So having it set to this just makes more sense but obviously if you're super used to it the other way, it's optional. All right, up to number 11, this is kind of a quick two-parter. So look at the top of any Explorer window and then click on the little drop down arrow icon, which allows you to customize the quick access bar. I suggest unchecking where it says minimize the ribbon. So you'll always have access to that bar at the top with all the settings. This is obviously preferential, but I think it's better to always have the options right there instead of being hidden. And the other little thing here is to check where it says redo. So you will also have the redo button at the top of Explorer windows, since by default, the undo button is up there. It just makes sense to have the redo button there too, if you need it. All right, before we move on from the file Explorer settings, here's an important bonus setting. It's not gonna count, which I did mention in another video, but is so important. I think I should mention it twice here. And it's back in that view tab in the options menu. And here you want to uncheck hide file extensions for known file types. I went into more detail in the old video about this one, but it makes sure that all files always show their file extensions so you always know what kind of file you're dealing with, which is incredibly important. All right, we still got a couple more and these remaining settings are actually found in the control panel, which you can get to just by opening the start menu and searching control panel. And as a quick bonus tip, you can right click on this result and pin it to the start menu so it's easier to access later. Anyway, number 12 can be found in the control panel and then system and security and then power options. Here you'll find a few different performance profiles and the default is probably set to balanced. But if you're on a desktop computer that's just plugged in all the time, you should probably just change it to high performance so the computer is never limited. If you're on a laptop, you probably shouldn't set it to high performance unless it's plugged in because it will drain the battery much faster. And fun fact, in some editions of Windows like Pro for workstations and enterprise, there's even an ultimate performance mode you can see here, which supposedly squeezes out even more power somehow, but don't worry about it if you don't have that, high performance will still use your computer's full potential. And finally, we have number 13, which can be found in Windows Update, Advanced Options, and then if it's not already disabled, make sure you disable the option called 
restart this device as soon as possible when a restart is required to install an update. I know it's a mouthful, but it does exactly as it says. So when this is enabled, Windows will do the thing where it tries to restart immediately after installing an update and only gives you like a few minutes to respond and delay it, even if you're actively using the computer. So definitely make sure you disable this one or you never know when Windows update will strike next. And so now we finished the part two of the Windows settings to change series. Again, you really need to watch the first one if you haven't already, which honestly has settings that are even more important than the ones in this video. So you could just click on that thumbnail right here to watch it, or I'll put the link in the description just in case. So thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.